Well, hi, everybody, and uh, good morning to you. It's been one of those uh, nights here in the north. So I'm up uh, quite early trying to uh, continue this process. We're, we're at raise and initiations uh, number 65. And we've learned that um, what DK calls the raise of aspect, raise one, two, and three, enable the uh, already initiate to take the higher initiations, initiation six, seven, eight, and nine. And he says they are purely connected with Shambhala. Well, that makes sense, of course, because initiation six takes us right onto the monadic plane and the monad is in a way a resident of Shambhala uh, even if not all monads choose to uh, remain on the path of earth service and uh, follow out the behests of Sanat Kumara for uh, a time as long as may be necessary before uh, taking another path. The four rays of attribute, uh, he tells us, particularly are synthesized with the medium as they are synthesized with the medium of the third ray of aspect are related more definitely to the hierarchy and therefore to the first five initiations. Then he divides the idea the rays of aspect are essentially related to the life or will aspect of the divinity, though of course consciousness um, is found in relation to each one of them and the rays of attribute are related to the consciousness aspect though of course will is found in relation to each one of these ray lords since they are uh, residents of Shambhala on what subplane uh, you know I'm not yet in a position to say but um, they, uh, you know, probably are on the logoic plane, uh, just the way the Buddhas of activity are, essentially, and I suppose the esoteric Kumaras. And when it comes to the cosmic physical plane, although he has uh, foci uh, uh, on higher cosmic planes, Sanat Kumara is also uh, focused on the logoic plane. Well, this is so much that we have been dealing with, you know, um, DK is reviewing and reviewing for us, but he's also presenting some wonderful new material. Uh, each initiation puts the initiate in a position to control certain related energies and enables him to become increasingly a trained manipulator of those energies. So we are dealing now, uh, the, uh, this, uh, I'm just uh, reviewing a couple of the major statements which were uh, presented in the previous program a few days ago. Initiation is a system or a scientific process whereby the septinate of energies which compose the sum total of all existences within our planetary life are realized and consciously used for the working out of the divine plan. So, you know, going back to page 340, if we wished uh, to do so, we see the different rays, which are, uh, what should we say, realized and consciously used uh, on each level for the working out of the divine plan. The seventh ray for initiation one, the sixth for initiation two, the fifth for initiation three, the fourth for initiation four, the first for initiation five, the uh, third for initiation six, the second for initiation uh, number seven. And then when it comes, I suppose, to the final initiations we have here the four uh, rays of attribute 
I suspect connected with initiation eight and the three rays of aspect, I suspect connected with initiation nine. Although what we can do here, um, yeah, what we can do is go to the actual source, which shouldn't take us too long, rays and initiations, and to page three, four, zero. Yes, this is a marvelous uh, little compilation here, tabulation. Yeah, the four minor rays for initiation eight. It's a transition, I suppose, to the astral plane, cosmic astral plane. And the three major rays, the final two initiations, both of which uh, we are told are very difficult to take on our planet. And they don't necessarily have to be taken on our planet because there are those who are going uh, towards a training program which is found on some of the sacred planets uh, uh, for instance uh, Venus uh, or Jupiter to name two of them probably Mercury is also involved and there may be others but he doesn't necessarily uh, mention them directly there are many secrets as to what are the planetary schools and what they teach and he doesn't give the names of all the schools but you know where to find that at the end of esoteric psychology uh, astrology uh that's volume three of the series the rays and initiations and he deals with the planetary schools and when um the candidate or the monad uh, is on the way of higher evolution, he passes to one or other of these uh, esoteric schools on a sacred planet uh, before being uh, released into a still higher opportunity, which helps him make his way to the um, various constellations, which are uh, chakras within the uh, one about whom not may be said whose uh, major center is the Pleiades well here we are on uh, number 65 and um, <clears throat> let's see what he has to say we have only another <laughs> almost maybe 270 pages left to go in this um, a gathering of text. <coughs> Excuse me. Every human being in the early stages of his development in ancient Lemuria and Atlantis or possessing today the Lemurian or Atlantean state of consciousness, and there are many such. That's a very interesting statement because it shows you there were when we're dealing with the um, uh, those uh, considerations about Lemurians and Atlanteans, we're dealing with consciousness, even more so than the form. I mean, it's possible, I suppose, for people to possess uh, the earlier stages of consciousness and still have a form uh, related to one of the later root races to sub races though i i suspect there are formally um those who still have inherited um a form of the uh lemurian um well a lemurian form is what i want to say and we have discussed what some of those um remnant forms might be such as the aboriginal forms the uh and according to blavatsky some of the bushmen and some of the uh uh the vedhas of ceylon and or not ceylon anymore but sri lanka and the ainus of japan uh, i suppose that those have strong connections um and are vestiges uh of the later lemurian uh, forms as far as the atlantean forms there are many and in a way uh, formally speaking the 
the entire Oriental group uh, possesses Atlantean forms and uh, the South Sea Islanders and so forth. So I'm not an expert in this uh, sort of uh, ethnology, but that is the hint that is given in Blavatsky's books. And yet, through it all, it's the stage of consciousness which is the most important because when you look at the vast number of uh, Oriental people, so many of them are in the advanced states of the fifth ray, fifth um, root race consciousness. So consciousness is the name of the game, and that is what we want to d discover when we are assessing any human being. Are they primarily, let us say, in the emotional Atlantean stage of consciousness, or have they moved into the more mental and even, even higher mental states of consciousness, regardless of what the outer form might be? So anyway, uh, every human being uh, in the earlier stages of his development, uh, either in those early days of Lemuria or Atlantis millions of years ago, or possessing today the Lemurian or Atlantean states of consciousness, now, there are many such. Matter of fact, maybe the, the greatest number of human beings possess uh, the Atlantean states state of consciousness or some modification of it comes into incarnation upon one of the four rays of attribute. Uh -huh. Because these rays are peculiarly and uniquely related to the fourth kingdom of nature and therefore to the fourth creative hierarchy. So this is, as I'm recalling, a very important uh, statement. We find this several times throughout the books. Um, so, uh, comes into incarnation. Okay. So, this means that the, the first um, and earliest incarnations uh, and those of people with this kind of consciousness mm, um, are found upon the uh, four rays of attributes. Okay. So this means uh, probably, and I think later he says it, uh, both in terms of soul and personality. Because the working of one's way uh, onto a first, second, or third ray soul uh, requires time, and no individual is uh, coming into incarnation on the first, second, or third ray in terms of the soul. But uh, the same is true of the personality. The first, second, or third ray in terms of the personality is also not an option. Uh, what is interesting, though, is that uh, personality, the idea of personality is discussed even in those early days, when technically considered a personality as an integrated uh, unit of mind, emotions, and body does not really yet exist, and yet the idea of the personality is discussed as that upon which uh, these people come into incarnation. During the long, long cycle of the present fifth root race, well, you know, it's been about a million years, but if we go back to um, the middle part of Atlantis when the fifth sub-race was emerging, then also the seeds of the fifth root race were emerging, according to uh, Philip Lindsay in his uh, Hidden History of Humanity. During the long, long cycle of the present fifth race, the so-called Aryan race, there came a period lying now in the far distant and forgotten past um, when individuals who had attained a certain state of consciousness transferred onto one of the three rays of aspect. 
Now, it seems to me, you know, that this can be, uh, this can certainly be in the sole sense of the transfer. Sorry. Uh, but also the personality, uh, because uh, personality is upon the third, second, and first rays are not initially to be found. According to the predominance of the energy or line of force, which was conditioned uh, by these rays, Okay, when individuals who had attained a certain state of consciousness transferred onto one of the three areas of aspect, according to the predominance of the energy or line of force which was conditioned by these rays. So we would probably have to, uh, let's just say, uh, look uh, closely at the ray chart. Sorry in order uh, to determine the nature of the transfer. But always there is a moving on and a moving up towards uh, the uh, most powerful of the rays, the rays of aspect. And uh, this is very similar to what we call the absorption of the uh, lesser planets into the greater synthesizing planets, of which there are three, and each one of those represents uh, one of the rays of aspect, uh, monadically anyway, Uranus first ray, Neptune second ray, and Saturn third ray. So there are all kinds of fusions that precede that, and I've discussed this in my written commentaries on a treatise on cosmic fire as much as, you know, one can discuss these things, at least I've offered some uh, hypotheses as to how this might occur. Okay. Now, one of the rays of aspect and two of the rays of attribute, rays three, five, and seven, are conditioned by the first ray of will or power. This is probably not a new uh, idea to us. Um, so this is called the uh, will line, whilst uh, rays four and six are conditioned by the second aspect of love wisdom. This I much earlier pointed out. It has been in our minds, and we know uh, whether we are predominantly on one line or the other. I'm recalling an individual... Uh, I think in one of uh, the Tibetans' uh, hypothetical ray charts had a first ray soul and a fifth ray mind. And yet he was uh, considered uh, predominantly on the uh, line of, um, of the soft line rays because the monadic ray was the second and so many other rays in the system were on the soft line. Anyway, these are more of the refinements of the ray science, and we will get to them as the decades and centuries uh, roll on. A cycle of lives upon the third ray of creative intelligence, yeah, and that's what he likes to call it, not the ray of activity or the ray of abstract mind, but the ray of creative intelligence, and it gives a it gives a whole new slant on the potentials of this ray, uh, giving a new, uh, on the potentials of this ray, because it involves uh, manipulation and creativity in order to manifest the divine plan. So anyway, a cycle of lives upon the third ray of creative intelligence always precedes this um, transference. Well, let's see. Um, now, of course, we have the issue that the transference might be to the third uh, ray soul, interestingly enough. 
So let's just say uh, I'll make a speculation here that uh, that if the uh, soul ray is to be the uh, third, uh, and um, meaning that the previous soul ray had been the fourth or sixth, interestingly enough, either one of them can transfer to the third ray, um, then one can still have a, a third ray personality. Okay. Third ray personality uh, before the transfer to the, sorry, to the uh, third ray soul. And um, I can see some work I'm going to have to do there. Okay. Because, you know, uh, it is rare and a belated and a later development to have the uh, personality ray and the soul ray upon the same uh, ray or ray number. Uh, DK gives one example of a uh, highly developed first ray soul uh, having a first ray personality. Now, that could not happen unless the individual was indeed highly developed. And here's the question, can we assume that this is the case for all? It was the case for the first ray type. Can we assume that if a second ray soul is to be a second ray personality, have a second ray personality, and a third ray soul is to have a third ray personality, then these individuals must be equally highly developed as the first ray type, first ray soul type was when he uh, chose or was able to work through a first ray personality. So anyway, uh, now uh, many, the, uh, many uh, of these transferences uh, in terms of soul occur uh, around the period of the first initiation. Okay, so uh, first initiation. Not sure about the transference uh, to the third ray soul. But it is true, but true for uh, second and first ray soul transferences. So, um, before the first initiation, anyway, we are told that um, the personality will often be found on the third ray. Uh, so, before uh, the first initiation, the personality will often be found on the third ray. And so, we are comparing this lengthy period of a life, lives upon the third ray of creative intelligence as if they are preparing for uh, preparing the individual to take the first initiation. You know, there are certain uh, clearing houses, we are told. The solar plexus is a clearing house ruled by the sixth ray. The throat center is a clearing house ruled by the third ray. And many energies have to be gathered uh, into those centers before a transition is possible and it seems that with regard to the first initiation uh, many energies are gathered into the throat center as that clearing house before the transition into the fifth kingdom and true discipleship and the first initiation uh, become possible anyway you know we have to read this very carefully because well, you know, he doesn't spell everything out explicitly. Uh, we have to put what he says together in such a way that it really makes sense to us. 
Uh, this ray experience covers a vast period of time. Now, I wonder if he's talking about the transfer experience, or he's talking about the uh, a cycle of lives upon the third ray, or does he just talk about the general transfer experience? Um, so we have to, you know, question here, uh, is he speaking of lives upon the third ray or of the general experience of transfer in the soul sense from one ray to another? I figure there's pretty well going to be one transference when it comes to the soul ray. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, maybe some individualized in Lemuria transferred onto another ray in Atlantis and yet another ray in Aryan time. Sometimes I look at the ray uh, history of the Christ as much as we're able to know it, and we learn that he took the third initiation in a um, fourth ray ashram on a fourth ray soul, presumably in Atlantean times, and now we know he's a great second ray soul. So we begin to wonder, was he incarnated in Lemuria, which he was, but as a sixth ray soul? That would involve two transferences. Except in the occult teaching and the archives, which remain in the custody of the masters, history as we know it and as it expresses the emergence from primitive to uh, and primeval times does not exist. So what he's saying here is that our present uh, human history is relatively uh, worthless and does not really exist. Okay, so but but the true history does exist and um, in the custody of the masters and there's been a great attempt through the work of HPB to give us as much of this uh, history as we might be able to assimilate. From the angle of occultism, history only covers the emergence of those cultures and civilizations which are called the fifth uh, root race. Uh, and let's see, not even all of them. Only a small part of it being recognized uh, as Aryan. Uh, the latter is simply a modern and scientific nomenclature covering a small period um, of modern history. So let's just say the, um, the early uh, Aryan developments, uh, okay. Now, that's time to put that one in, I believe. D-E-V-S and D-E-V-E-L-O-P-M-E-N-T-S. Okay, uh, the, the early uh, Aryan developments of a million or so years ago, and perhaps more, are not covered by our uh, modern academic history, in which we seem to invest uh, so much confidence as if it couldn't possibly be wanting or incorrect. The Aryan cycle covers the period of relation between groups and nations, though positing as a necessary hypothesis previous but unknown cycles of human living where in primitive man roamed the earth. Well, uh, and this is, uh, this is from the modern historical perspective, right? So uh, here he speaks of the modern historical perspective. Okay, right. <clears throat> Uh, 
And that is, you know, if you think about how you were taught history, there's modernity and then primitivity, which preceded that for ages, and the number of years of primitivity, primitivity is always uh, being expanded now back to some perhaps few million years. Or uh, positing sometimes the existence of previous civilizations which have uh, completely disappeared, leaving behind them uh, faint traces of ancient organized civilizations and cultural remains, uh, plus indications of interworld relationships of which there is no positive proof. Uh, he is speaking um, of the hypotheses uh, of modern uh, historical um, supposition so the, or theory, modern historical theory. Okay, these, it is suggested, must have existed owing to the um, similarity of architecture, language roots, traditions, and myths of religions. And this is what we mean by the um, inter-world relationship um, because of the, uh, of the, what he calls, inter-world relationships. Okay. During these earlier periods, all human beings were conditioned by the four rays of attribute. And uh, we might, um, this might be considered the pre-intelligent stage, uh, though always there were guides of great intelligence. Now this is this is the area here, page 560, where he does say, in a most definitive manner, something that we really need to take into consideration. During these earlier periods, all human beings were conditioned by the four rays of attributes. Now this is a huge statement, especially with what is coming up immediately following it, both as souls. And as incarnated persons, they were on one of these four rays. Okay, so there it's stated, point blank, that in the ancient days, we did not have first, second, and third ray souls, nor did we have first, second, and third ray personalities, but we did, of course, and necessarily have first, second, and third ray monads, that we had to have. Towards the middle of the Atlantean cycle, untold million years ago, well, how long ago? Let's just say maybe um, five or six million years ago, uh, since uh, early, Atlantean times were 12 million years ago. Okay, <coughs> ATLN, let's call that Atlantean. Atlantean, okay. So, a long time ago, but... Uh, not as early as early Atlantean times. Uh, towards the middle of the Atlantean cycle, untold millions of years ago, maybe during the fourth or fifth sub-race, the influence of the third ray, probably during the fifth sub-race, in terms of numerical resonance, the influence of the third ray of active intelligence became exceedingly potent. So I'll just ask it as a question. Was this during the fifth, uh, the fifth uh, sub uh, race, okay, of the ATLN period. Right, and uh, FFSR, and this will be fifth 
sub-race. So the third ray really came in here, and this was a period of, uh, also a period of initiation. You know, initiation uh, came forth as a possibility during the Atlantean period, and uh, since the fifth ray is the ray that uh, is spoken of as conferring initiation, it's quite possible that this was the time when creative intelligence really emerged. Certain of the advanced uh, humanity of the period gradually found their way onto, or rather into, the stream of energy which we call the third ray. Okay. Now, what would that mean, uh, you know, either from the personality perspective or likely in terms of a transfer uh, onto the soul uh, ray, the third ray of the soul, this possibility emerged. The possibility, therefore, of becoming um, integrated personalities was for the first time recognized uh, and, and humanly recognized. Such an integration must ever precede conscious human initiation. So the third, uh, third ray is the integrator. And uh, we know this, uh, the third ray integrates the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh ray, or at least subsumes them, uh, controls them, uh, brings them together uh, into one field. And since the personality is the representing the third aspect of divinity, we can say uh, the third aspect, yes, that um, the integration of the personality uh, under that third ray, akin to the third aspect, precedes the actual possibility of initiation wherein the second ray begins to play its role, whatever the ray of the initiate might be. Because when you start to enter the kingdom of God, or the fifth kingdom, the second ray is prominent and is the subsuming ray of all the other rays. It's a, a hierarchical process, and the hierarchy we know uh, is found upon uh, that second ray. It is a heart center uh, in the planetary being. So um, integration now, integrated personalities become possible. Um, and there can be true preparation for uh, the first initiation. Now, of course, the Buddha, you know, such as he was, had already, um, if not taken the third initiation on the moon chain, he had been uh, capable of so doing. But opportunity was not offered at that time, or at least towards the end of the moon chain process. Uh, the Christ, um, too, obviously, had uh, taken before Middle Atlantean times, the first and second initiation, because it was the third initiation which he did take uh, in those times. So then this is a um, kind of a general statement, as there were, so this is a general statement, um, because... Um, there were those who were more advanced, but I would think that uh, the majority had to approach uh, the first initiation, and as we've learned, this occurs um, through a series of lives uh, on the third ray in terms of the personality. We're not sure how many lives, or even it might be just one, but it seems some third ray training uh, in terms of integrating the personality is necessary before the uh, first initiation can be taken. Forget not my earlier statement that all the rays of attributes are focused in 
and absorbed by the third ray of aspect. Okay, so, you know, there, the way DK puts it, um, the fifth ray transfers to the first, the fourth and the sixth transfer either to the second or to the third, and in these days it sounds more like the third ray, and the seventh ray transfers to the first, though under special dispensation, when the Master R uh, became the Mahachohan, he took a number of his uh, third and um, second degree initiates onto the third ray with him, even though he was a seventh ray master. He was monadically the third ray, and he had to become the Mahachohan and wield particularly the third ray. And suppose I suppose he needed reinforcements there and then was training his um, probably initiates on the second and third ray, initiates of the second and third degree who were seventh ray souls, he took them onto the third ray. Well, this is all very intricate, isn't it? If we had, you know, the complete charts of the masters, we could be uh, much more certain about what we're uh, discussing here, but. Uh, a few hypotheses are possible and in order. A study of the charts which I gave and permitted to appear <laughs> in a treatise on cosmic fire will help us to uh, understand this. Yeah, and we, you know, we we have those uh, charts. Um, I'm not quite sure I should have had this up here. Yeah, I should have had this up here, but uh, I didn't. And um, let's just say if I go here and go here, and I go to the Alice Bailey diagrams, and I go here to this particular one, and then, um, well, I can move forward. And we see right there in this chart of hierarchy how the four masters of the rays of uh, attribute are subsumed or gathered together or absorbed by the energy of a third ray master. It, all, it almost seems that uh, there's very rapid progress for those upon the third ray at the moment, and they assume greater uh, responsibilities more suddenly than the other Raise. If you stop to think about what this uh, elevation of the Master R to Maha Chohan ship uh, signifies, with him still not being a master at the time that he was uh, Francis Bacon, and the elevation follows 300 years later, it's, it's very, 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 very rapid. Okay, <clears throat> so a study of the charts which I gave and permitted to appear in a treatise on cosmic fire will help you to understand this. They will prove useful, helpful, provided that you remember always that they are only symbolic in nature and constitute attempts to indicate visually a truth. So uh, we must not become slaves to these charts. Um, basically saying charts are but indications um, of the truth behind them, we might say. Okay. The Atlantean race was predominantly a race where in its leading exponents, the flower of the race, or the crest wave, as it is called, expressed an active intelligence. So, you know, the leaders, the human beings who were leaders in Atlantis, uh, who were leaders in uh, Atlantis, ATL, okay, I think we need that, <clears throat> ATL, Oop. ATL, right, <clears throat> 
So those who were the leaders in Atlantis were those on the third ray. Were those on the third ray. Now, of course, there had been uh, powerful, intelligent uh, individuals who were guiding the Atlantean race, but they uh, developed their intelligence in another place and in another context, and they were already the initiates. The Atlanteans as a whole had to emerge into that condition of intelligence and not simply uh, be passive receivers of the great ideas which helped them build their civilization. It was intelligence which its initiates had to de demonstrate and not love wisdom, as is the case today. So the Atlantean initiate was predominantly, uh, first and foremostly, intelligent. This expressed itself uh, in something quite different from what the average Atlantean could demonstrate. This expressed itself in a mental focus, a trained mind capable of illumination and great creative ability. Well, maybe we look at these things as uh, common to the uh, Aryan race. But maybe in those days they were not common. So the Atlantean initiate expressed uh, himself, herself, in a mental focus, a trained mind capable of illumination and great creative ability. In the Aryan race, uh, from which the occult point of view can be regarded as encompassing practically the totality of history as we have it, because we really know nothing about Atlantean history, you know, except what the great ones can convey. The influence of the second ray of love wisdom is slowly becoming the dominating factor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you know, uh, let's just say that uh, solar angels, um, yeah, okay, SAS. Yeah, I see how that works. Solar angels, um, whose rays, uh, the rays of which are predominantly the second and fifth, are uh, closely guiding the Aryan race. So when we talk about love wisdom, we're talking about the second ray, and this is the fifth of the races and the third of the self-conscious races. <coughs> so the influence of the second ray of love wisdom is slowly becoming the dominating factor. Men are rapidly finding their way onto that ray, I suppose from the sixth and fourth, and the number of people found upon that line of energy is already very great, though not yet as great as those upon the third ray. And hence, when we look at our society, we see all these third-ray pursuits. Okay, so in our uh, global civilization, there are many, many hmm, third-ray pursuits and fewer um, second-ray pursuits because the number of those upon the second ray is not yet as great as those upon the third ray. So this is, uh, you know, something that I think is very interesting because, of course, the number of souls in any particular planetary globe um, is known to the hierarchy, though not known to us. So they are rapidly finding their way onto the second ray, and then I have to say, from the second, from the uh, fourth or sixth rays, the lines of transference are that, the fourth or sixth ray. <coughs> so, and the number of people found upon that line is already very great, especially at this time. There's quite an influx of second-ray souls, I suppose, to heal and rebuild our civilization, though not yet as great as those upon the third-ray as it today expresses itself through 
one of the four rays of attribute. So it's uh, the third ray and the other uh, rays of attribute, those are aspect. So rays of attribute through which the third ray expresses. And I suppose uh, the fifth and seventh would be foremost, uh, but um, even the fourth and sixth have to be considered mm, as rays through which the, the third ray expresses. Okay. The latest of the human races, again, through its foremost exponents, has to manifest the spirit of love through wisdom. Now, this is our immediate task uh, at this time. The basis of this expression is an unfolding inclusiveness. Okay a developing understanding and a heightened spiritual perception which is capable of envisioning that which lies beyond the three worlds of human evolution. And um, we know that the second method of inducing soul control, which is related, um, okay, method of inducing soul control is called the quality of the of the hidden vision and uh, is naturally related to the second ray of love uh, wisdom okay. my typing isn't the best this morning but just bear with me and uh, it will all it will all emerge okay so um, that's our work now in the Aryan race to express the second ray, whereas in the fourth root race, the Atlantean, the great third ray of intelligence had to be expressed. Now, um, it might be said that the one-pointed life of the focused intellectual, that life which the higher initiates demonstrated in Atlantean initiations, and the extensive inclusive life of the modern Aryan initiate is the objective held before the disciple upon the path of discipleship and in the master's ashrams. Maybe the path of discipleship uh, has much to do with the um, one-pointed focused intellectual life and the work in the master's ashrams with the expression of the uh, second ray of love wisdom. The extensive inclusive life of the modern Aryan initiate. Now, whenever he is going to mention that word inclusive, we are going to find that the uh, second ray is suggested. So these, these are the incentives held before the disciple and those who, as disciples, are now becoming initiates and entering the master's ashrams from the third ray to the second ray. The presence in humanity of an ardent intelligence and a growing inclusiveness is symbolized under the words, the vertical and horizontal life, and is therefore visually portrayed under the symbol of the cross. So the, um, how can we say here, uh, ardent intelligence uh, is of the third ray and the growing inclusiveness is of the second ray. Okay, S S D R. Okay, let's just put it like that. 
and see if we can make that second ray. And these are what we are presently developing. The will is not generally yet that which is developing. I have here indicated to you, therefore, that the cross is strictly the symbol of Aryan unfoldment uh, because, um, let's just say, because it includes <laughs> inclusiveness or the inclusiveness of the second ray. The symbol of Old Atlantis was a line indicating the vertical line of mental enfoldment and aspiration. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So there's another way to look at this. The symbol of Old Atlantis was the line indicating the vertical line of mental unfoldment and aspiration, simply wanting to rise. The Christian consciousness, or the consciousness of the soul, interestingly, is the perfecting and control of the mind plus the demonstration of love and service. Uh, uh, I suppose an outward uh, radiation along the horizontal line. Uh, you know, offering the heart through the uh, outstretched arms. Uh, these are the outstanding characteristics of the hierarchy and the essential qualities of those who form the kingdom of God. So interesting, isn't it, that in Atlantis we had a largely emotional race and the incentive was to develop intelligence. In Aryan times we have a very ardently intelligent race and the incentive is to develop a quality which is different and on a different ray line, just the way the intelligent line, intelligence line was on a different ray line than the predominant Atlantean consciousness. So the next phase of development for the Aryan type is on a different ray line. It is the second ray of love wisdom. And we can see how important then the solar angels would be because they predominantly express not only the fifth ray, and have descended sacrificially onto the fifth plane, but they express the booty, the great love, wisdom, energy. Well, I think, you know, we are reaching the point here. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be discussing here the coming race, which is still far ahead. And uh, I suppose uh, not just the sixth root race, but the seventh, which would involve the will. So let's, let's call this the end of Rays and Initiation Webinar Commentary number 65. And uh, I don't think we covered many pages here. There were a lot of things to... This is from page 561 and uh, up to 561 anyway, 560. Okay, we'll get there. 558 to 561. 561. Yes. <clears throat> and we'll be getting, uh, be beginning number 66 shortly. Okay. Okay. So page uh, 558 to 561. And let's see if I have done this correctly. Yeah, I have. Okay. And then, um, and the day is uh, the 14th, Valentine's Day. <clears throat> 14th of February. And now the beginning of Rays and Initiations webinar commentary number 66, which will begin with page 561. And we'll talk about the coming civilization. Uh, the coming root races and whether they will express the will to what extent um, I suppose the coming root race is the sixth and um, if we follow the idea that all was the ray towards which the advance guard intends or strives um, 
will be on a different ray line, then we can expect the first ray line to be on uh, to be to be that ray towards which the advanced are striving, and it's different from the major ray line of the sixth root race, which would involve the two, four, six line. And uh, there'll be a lot of will, of course, in the seventh root race, but there'll also be the factor of synthesis of the first, second, and third ray. Because when you look at how the seventh ray was put together out of the rays of aspect, all three seem to be uh, involved. Well, okay, we're, we are there, and um, thank you for bearing with me this fine morning. Didn't have a whole lot of sleep, so maybe I'm <laughs> slurring my words a little more than I, a little more than I should be. But hopefully, uh, you know, as we read Master DK's wonderful words and what it suggests, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm still struck by this idea that in the early times, you know, all personalities and all souls were on rays of attribute four, five, six, seven, and none on rays of aspect. So if the ray of aspect was to be manifest in a newly incarnating uh, soul, individual, it had to be manifest on the monadic level, which indeed it was, and we learn about this in Esoteric Psychology, Volume 2. All right, friends, thank you very much for your attendance, and uh, we will proceed. Bye-bye for now.